Judge, we have one more witness. I don't know if you want to take a quick five-minute break before we call the next, the last Spanish-speaking witness. Are the interpreters prepared to go forward? All right, so we're going to finish up day five in this video. But before we get started, the court has some things to deal with first. Because Schmiestad decided to get up out of his chair and hobble around the courthouse aimlessly. And I know that's a little shocking because it isn't like him to get up at all unless he's being forced to approach the judge or a witness. But that's what happened. And unfortunately, he busted our next witness watching the trial on YouTube. And I know what you're thinking. Mushmouth, why does that even matter? The scumbag group and the dude bros all sat in the courtroom and watched the trial and heard every word that the other witnesses said. Isn't it fair for the other side to do the same thing? Apparently not. So before we watch the next witness testimony, we'll have to deal with this hypocrisy first. So get ready, because this is kind of infuriating. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. Please be seated. We are outside the presence of the jury, meeting with the attorneys and Mr. Mew. Uh, Mr. Smestad asked to approach with a concern. Mr. Smestad. Your Honor, we were informed by our victim witness staff that some of the witnesses were out in the hall live streaming the trial. They're under a sequestration order. Apparently one of those folks is uh, the gentleman who's just about to testify. Um, and I forget his last name, but his first name is Ariel. Um, obviously that's of concern because if he was watching other folks testify, it defies the purpose of the sequestration order. We'd like to have the court instruct the witnesses again to not be watching the trial. Did the state's attorneys instruct the witnesses about the sequestration order? We, we provided written notice to every witness that met with us. Ariel would not meet with us, um, but the Spanish speakers we met with, which was uh, Sergio, Tatiana, and um, Gilma. Gilma, we gave them written instructions in Spanish not to watch the trial, can't be in the trial, don't read the news. Okay. Did they understand or did, it, did your written instructions include that this was a court's order? Yes. Right. We also Just, told them verbally when we met with them, but again, Ariel refused to meet with us, so and, and, I don't know if defense told him he's on their witness list. Ariel is a defense witness, Your Honor. Mr. Nelson, was the sequestration order given to? Not to Spanish-speaking witnesses, no, Judge. Mm -hmm. I did not have a translation service. Obviously, it's an oversight, and I will change my practice in the future. Is there anything else besides <clears throat> tell the witnesses about the sequestration order that you want me to do? I don't know that there is anything you can do at this point, Judge. Okay, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. I'm, I'm happy to remind them about the sequestration order. Uh, but as long as uh, everyone is satisfied with that being the limit of my involvement, I'll stop. Sequestration is important, obviously. Uh, we don't want witnesses forming their testimony based on what other witnesses have said. Especially in this case, the gentleman who did just testified, the cross-examination is going to be about the same. They're the, both the two that walked up to the scene and either saw things or didn't see things. He now knows what to expect on cross-examination. He's seen his friend go through it and heard it go through it, I think, and defense did not tell them about the sequestration order, which is just as much their duty as it is our duty. So I think it is a pretty big problem. I might ask for some sort of curative instruction that defense did not inform their witnesses of the sequestration order, um, but I think we can address that later for now. I think it will be a point for cross. Mr. Nelson, anything to add? No, Judge. All right, what I plan to do is uh, invite the witnesses in. I will uh, assume that they had not uh, received or fully appreciated the extent of the sequestration order. I'll explain it to them with the benefit of the interpreters. Uh, if the state wishes to cross-examine, uh, you may. So would somebody bring the witnesses in, please? All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. So obviously I'm no legal expert. I'm just some random guy who likes to watch trials, and I make no claims otherwise. So I don't know if this is a common thing, but in my uninformed opinion, if the witnesses on one side of the argument have to be sequestered, then I think both sides should be sequestered in a self-defense trial like this, because until the trial is over, it could go either way, right? So as far as I'm concerned, 
these quote-unquote victims could just as easily be called suspects. So why are they allowed to sit in the courtroom lounging around listening to what everybody else is saying? The concern should be exactly the same. But whatever, like I said, I'm just some random guy watching trials. I'm certainly no lawyer or paralegal or anything like that. Just a guy with very loud and obnoxious opinions. And I obviously can't do anything about this huge pile of cow ploppy. On with the next witness, I guess. All rise for the jury. All right, please be seated. Uh, Mr. Nelson, who is next? Uh, Ariel Chuguez Layette, please. Uh, please raise your right hand. The clerk will administer the oath. Yes. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Nelson. Afternoon, sir. Uh, Good afternoon. Can you tell us your name, please? Ariel Chagas. Ariel Chagas. Ariel, do you know this man here to my right, wearing the blue shirt and the red tie and the green jacket? Si. Yes. Who is that? Nick. Nick. How do you know Nick? I met him through my cousin. Ernesto. Ernesto. How long have you known Nick? A little over five years. During that time, have you had an opportunity to observe his character, his person? Sí. Yes. All right, let's continue. Uh, Mr. Nelson? I'm just going to repeat the question. Le voy a During the time that you've known him for over those five years, have you had an opportunity to observe his person, his character? Sí, como no. Yes, of course. Do you consider him to have a character for peacefulness? Sí. Yes. In fact, when the police talked to you about this, you even mentioned that to them, did you not? Sí. Yes. I think when you spoke with the police, you they used terms which you agreed with along the lines of... Yes, I'm sorry. The objection is sustained. Uh, next question, please. You spoke with the police in August of 20 and 22 to a Spanish-speaking police officer. Do you remember that? Sí. Yes. And I want to ask you some questions that that Spanish-speaking police officer asked you about your observations of Nick on that day. Okay? Okay. Okay. Just so we're clear. It's in August of 22 that the police officer is asking you questions about Nick in July 30th of 22. Does that make sense? Sí. Yes. And do you remember the officer asking you if Nick was calm or angry on that day, July 30th, 2022? I don't remember if the officer asked me that or not. Let me just ask you this. As you sit here today, do you remember on July 30th, was Nick Mew angry or was he calm or did he have some other character demeanor that you noticed? No, so he was calm. No. He was calm. He was calm. Okay. On that day, July 30th, did you see Nick with a pair of goggles and a snorkel? Sí. Yes. At some point that day, did your girlfriend drop your phone so your phone was lost in the river? Sí. Yes. I want to ask you questions before the phone was lost, okay? Okay. Okay. Before the phone was lost, do you remember Nick using the goggles and snorkel to swim in the river at different times? Sí. Yes. When he did that, was he wearing his hat? No recuerdo. I don't remember. Was he wearing his sunglasses when he snorkeled? I remember he had them on before using it. Do you remember that he put his glasses back on after he was done snorkeling? No, no recuerdo. No, I don't remember. Okay. I want to just jump ahead now to the phone and it being lost, okay? What did you guys do when you lost your phone? We started looking for it near the area where it had gotten lost. Did Nick uh, volunteer to do anything? Yes, he started swimming and looking for it with the snorkel. 
Did he go um, in the direction that the water was flowing? Yes. There's a picture there to your left that's marked as Exhibit 12A. Do you see yourself there in the flag shorts? Yes. Is that the phone or in a lanyard around your neck? What's see. your phone? Yes. In, what is your phone in? Is it in some protective package? What's that in? To uncover. Yes, I cover. Does that uh, does your phone does your phone does your phone float when it's in that? I suppose it does. You lost your phone that day, correct? Sí. Yes. Do you have that phone now? No. No. Did you get returned to you at some point? Sí. Yes. Who returned it to you? A sheriff, I believe, from here. Do you understand the police found your phone eventually? Sí, lo encontraron. Yes. And you got it back? Y sí. Yes. You lost the phone. You said you saw Nick go snorkeling or go swim for it. What did you see? He was looking for it with the snorkel um, down the river. At some point, did you learn that Nick had, was in contact with other people on the river? Yes. Was that because something you saw or something you heard? I heard it from his wife. What did you hear from his wife? She said that Nick was in trouble. What did you do when you heard that? My girlfriend told me to go look and see what was going on. Did you go look and see? Say. Yes. Did you walk down river towards where Nick was? Say. Yes. As you were walking there, what did you see? Well, at first we were, we were very far away. I don't know the distance exactly, but we were very far away. So I started walking. I had my beer on my hand, and I was getting closer a little bit, and I Bonus. saw that, that Nick was close or near a group of people, young people. And what I was able to understand uh, uh, from the distance where I was at is that they were mm, joking or well, yeah, bullying. Uh, oh, bullying him. Somebody had taken his snorkel and had thrown it down the river, something like that. Uh, that's what I was seeing as I was getting closer. I, and so then I was think that, thinking that it was just a game for them. But as I got closer, I see that a lot of people, that many people started hitting him. Let me stop but, you there for a second. Can, can you describe when you say they were hitting the them, was it with their hands, their feet, their knees, fists. Can you just tell me what you saw? With the hands. One person, more than one person? <coughs> Several people. There, there were many people around. And when you saw them hit Nick, what happened to Nick? Did he stay standing or, or did something else happen? I remember. Remember that he fell to the river, to the water. What happened? What did you see next after Nick had fallen into the water? I think that somebody was kind of like uh, pushing him down. But I was still getting closer, but, but I was basically walking. As you got closer, what did you see next? As I was getting closer, I saw that somebody started bleeding. What do you remember next? Uh, then I saw, well, Nick was kind of standing up. Uh, I was over here. He was to my left. Oh, and I believe a woman came over uh, towards him to hit him. And then what did you see? Uh, Nick responded. He defended himself. There were many people around. And what I saw was uh, re it happened really quickly, really fast. And I think later I went to where Nick was or I got to where Nick was. And when you got to where Nick was, what did you do or what did you see? I only saw that uh, he was, uh, I think he had gotten up. I touched his arm, but at that moment there was a, a lot of blood uh, right in front of me, uh, blood that belonged to the other people. It, that happened very quickly. I'm just trying to say what I remember the most. So we, we went back. Was it hard for you to make sense of what you were seeing and what was happening? Sí, era muy, muy rápido. 
Yes, it was very fast. There were many people around. There was a big disturbance. And it is a little difficult to assimilate or what had happened or to let it sink in. Are you able now, after some time, to pick out every detail? Or do you just remember what you've said? No, I only remember that, uh, what I am telling you now, because some, some time already went by. So when we walked back... Please wait. Uh, question, please. What happened next? Can I continue? Yes, you may. When we started walking back in the direction towards the group, straight towards the group... I was on the left side, Nick was on the right side, and at that moment, when we had walked a little, I see that on the other side of the river or, uh, was the young man with the injury to his stomach. He was shouting, look what you did to me. He was kind of yelling or shouting at Nick, and at that moment, the young guy fell to the water. So we continued walking, and I, was, uh, I kept going towards the group, and Nick uh, kept going to the other side of the river, straight. Did you see Nick do anything at the other side of the river? I did not uh, keep, uh, keep an eye on him because I went to see my girlfriend. Did you see Nick? Did Nick join you back at the tubes where you're group of friends were? Two. Yes. At some other point when you're walking back to the tubes, did anybody yell or scream or run up near where you were? There were many people no, running no, 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 no. And, and screaming. Um, they, uh, uh, the, some people came towards our group, but they didn't get too close. They, I, I don't remember what they... Uh, they were just yelling and screaming, and I don't remember what they were saying. Did you respond to them in any way? No, no, go. No, I did not. Did you, uh, did you see Ernesto or Sergio or Nick or anyone else from your group respond to them in any way? No. No. When you were... Uh, Back at the tubes, I want to ask you questions about that, okay? Did you get a chance to kind of make some observations of Nick? Did you see him? See him poco. Yes, somewhat. What did he look like? Um, he looked like uh, kind of scared, uh, pale. Those are the only questions I have. Thank you. Mr. Anderson? Ariel, is it? Fair, you're pretty uncomfortable testifying here today. No. No. You're, you're comfortable up there on the stand? I don't understand your question. Ernesto is your uncle? My cousin. Cousin, okay. He's best friends with Nick. Yes. Are you friends with Nick, or do you just know Nick through Ernesto? It could be said that we're friends, not close friends, but kind of friends. So you saw the young guys, the boys, knock the goggles out of Nick's hands? That's what I was able to distinguish. That's the first thing that I distinguished. And you were, were, you, you were already walking towards Nick when you saw that? Uh, yes, I was starting to walk. The, the young guys were still in their tubes, right? I cannot answer that. I don't know. I don't remember. I think they were standing up around Nick, I think. So they were standing around Nick, um, and they knocked his goggles out of his hands as they were walking up. Two. Yes. Did you see Nick run up to those young guys before that happened? I, I really didn't, no. What, what was the next thing you saw? Well, like I said before, I wasn't paying too much attention because I thought they were just playing with him. They, they were just bullying him. But you're already walking over there because you thought he was in trouble, right? Two. Yes. So you didn't think it was they were just playing. You already were worried about them? When I was getting closer, yes, because I saw that they were hitting him. But they were 
many people around him. Well, why were you walking there if you weren't worried about him until you saw him getting hit? It was the way that I reacted because uh, I was nervous. About what? Because of what was happening. What was happening that made you start walking over there before you saw his dog was getting knocked out? I don't understand your question. Before that happened, I had not seen anything. Is this huge fat ass actually suggesting that he should have been running? You know, if you smell like bologna and vinegar, you really shouldn't be this arrogant. You said you were walking over, and as you're walking over, you saw the goggles get knocked out in his hand, right? See? Yes. And you were walking over there because you were worried about Nick, right? See? Yes. What happened before? Before the goggles made you start walking over there, did you see anything that happened before that? I started to, uh, walking uh, in that direction when his wife said that he was in trouble. So, wife said he's in trouble, you start walking there, and you see his goggles and they knocked out of his hands. While they're all standing up, what did you see next? After they took uh, the goggles from him, they, it was kind of like they were starting to um, hit him, to give him blows. You said several people before. Does that mean three, four, five? Mm, no, I can't answer that. I don't remember how many people. And are you far away and still walking there at this point? Yes, I was still far away. Like, were you closer than when you saw the goggles get knocked off? That was at the beginning when I had just started walking. When people were hitting Nick, what kind of strikes were they? What do you remember? Mm, well, like um, slapping him with the hands. What, was he standing? He was standing. And then what happened? What do you, what do you remember next? Well, somebody knocked him down. Did you look at the size of his fat head? He looks like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And then he said he got up and defended himself? Well, that's what I saw next. What I was able to see uh, with all the people that were there. What do you mean he defended himself? What did you see? I saw that when he defended himself, well, it's... Oh, it's because this happened so quickly, I really can't uh, tell exactly when it happened. When I was closer, I saw that a, a girl went to attack him, and he defended himself. He responded. Oh. Well, I think that with his hands, but when I got closer, I started to see the blood, basically everywhere at that moment, I uh, uh, went and touched Nick on his arm, but it happened very quickly. Look at this joyless loser. Has this guy ever smiled a day in his life? Ariel, did somebody tell you to say these things? What do you mean? Who's going to tell me if that's what I remember, what I uh, lived, what I saw? Nick's the one who told you about the goggles. You didn't actually see that, right? No, nadie me dijo eso. No, nobody told me that. You said on page 18 towards the bottom, well, we couldn't really see because there's a lot of people, right? Sí. Yes. And then on page 19, you said, he thought they took off his mask and snorkel. Objection. Grounds? ¿Quién pensó? No, pero un momento. I think he's entitled to present his evidence the way he chooses. Overruled. On, on the bottom of page 19, you said he thought they took his mask and snorkel off. Do you see that? I don't understand your question or what you're trying to tell me. Actually, you're right. I was misreading that. Sorry. You turn to page 20. 
you talk about what you're seeing as you're walking up, kind of like today, agreed? Right? See? Yes. Okay. And then on page 21, well, actually, go back to page 20. You told the police that you saw the goggles get knocked out of his hand. See? Sí. You, yes. You said people were hitting him. See? Sí. Yes. You never said anything about him getting knocked down and then getting up and a girl trying to attack him, right? Yes, I said that uh, they were hitting him. You said the description you gave was they, they started beating him, women as well, as well as men. That's the description you gave, right? Okay. Yes. And then you said, you told law enforcement you never got close to Nick. Yes, I said that. And when law enforcement were talking to you, you said you got about here to, you pointed to a house across the street, right? I think it was farther. You testified earlier you got up and touched Nick's shoulder, right? Okay. Yes. But when you spoke with police, you said you never got close to him. You said the closest you got was you pointed to a house across the street. That's the closest you got to him, right? No, I did tell them that I had uh, gotten closer to him, but I did not remember if I had gotten close to him or not. And so the police showed me a picture uh, showing me that I had actually gotten close to him. And like I said, everything you know, happened so quickly. Even now, it's been difficult to realize how every, everything happened. Police asked you, did you get, stop close to Nick? And he said, no, because I get, didn't get to maybe from here to that other house. You never came close to Nick, not close, close. I told him that I had not uh, got uh, come close or too close to, to him, but I don't remember the distance. Then he said, no, I didn't get to maybe from here to that other house. And he pointed to a house across the street, right? And then you say, once you get close to him, that's when he started running. No, I don't remember saying that. Look at, can you turn to page 24? You were asked, are you close to him? Look, you're together right there with him, right? Let's see? Yes. That's, that's because you said you never got close, so police showed you a photo of you touching his shoulder, right? Let's see? Yes. And then you said, but that was when he started running by then. I really don't remember. It's in the transcript, right? Well, sir. <coughs> Maybe. You see it? Okay. I don't remember that he was running. But that's what you said. Yes, I said that, but I don't remember well. And you told... Law enforcement, you never saw Nick do anything to anyone, right? At some point, I, yes, I did say that he had done nothing, but I did see that he was defending himself. When you were shown a picture of Nick with a knife, you said, I never, sat, I never saw that, right? See. Yes. I'd like to get through this witness before breaking. Questions. Gotcha. That's what I was wondering. Ariel, that's you in the background, right? Where? Right here. Oh, we'll see. Oh, yes. I'm going to scroll. Police showed you this and asked you about it, and you said you never saw any of that, right? Um, no, I told them that I did not remember getting there. 
So when you're really far away on your way there, you see the goggles get knocked out of his hands. Right? Uh, yes, that's what I could distinguish or could I, that, that's what I could see. And then as you're getting closer to him, those other, you start to see other things happening. Right? I had mentioned that he was uh, getting uh, beaten. But then when police ask you about what happened when you're there, you said you didn't see any of that. Yes, I did not remember that I had gotten there. You forgot about that? Because of what I lived, I did not remember exactly what had happened because of what I went through. Nikolai never yelled, help, right? We never oh, heard. We were too far. Even when Nikolai came right next to you, he didn't say anything to you. He didn't say, help. No, he never spoke to me. He never talked to me. He never said, we need to get out of here? As far as I remember, we didn't talk. We just started walking. Well, Nikolai walked out first, right? And you stayed there. No, no me recuerdo. I don't remember well. Can we have the monitor again? Why don't we take our break? We're going to take about a 10-minute recess. Uh, please take the jury out. All right. So Baby Huey is really upset that he has to deal with the same things that the defense had to deal with all week. But let's not waste any time with the jury leaving and coming back. I'm just going to skip right to the next question. Mr. Anderson? Do you remember the officer asking if it was this attack? Um, why didn't you run? You didn't look afraid. Do you remember that question? Two? Yes. And you said... We didn't know what was happening, right? The officer asked, you walked on one side, but you never ran as if you were afraid. Like the others and the other two groups, they ran. They were afraid, but you didn't run. You didn't look so afraid. Neither did your group. And you responded, we didn't know what was happening, right? No me acuerdo de dicho eso. I don't remember having said that. It's in the transcript on page 31, right? That you did, in fact, say that? I'll show you. Uh, my question is, are you talking about after the problem or before? Uh, I don't understand your question. You didn't tell the officer you didn't understand, right? You're first asking me one thing and then another thing. Could you please be more specific? I'll move on. You were watching the trial and the testimony of Ernesto while out in the hallway, right? No. No. Were you sitting on the bench with the other Spanish-speaking witnesses while Rosie was playing the trial with the volume on? I was on the other side. Were you told by defense that you're not allowed to watch the trial? Yes. Nothing else. Mr. Nelson? Judge, I move for the admission of Exhibit 71, pages 18 through 24, per 908.01, sub 4, sub A, sub C. Any objection? Yes, I don't object to and many parts we've gone over. It's number 71. Exhibit 71, those six pages, 18 through 24. I'll receive the exhibit uh, pages reference for purposes of impeachment. Permission to publish those pages? Yes. I guess I just need to admit all the transcripts. Well, it's not your turn, it's his. Sure, so sorry. you can wait. Do you have Exhibit 71? Do you have any objections? No. Ariel, you were asked a lot of questions about a transcript. Yes. On page 18, did you say we all looked over there and we saw a lot? There were two groups in front of us? Yes. Did you say you couldn't really see what was happening? Yes. Did you say you couldn't see because there was a lot of people and then... So then you got a little closer? Yes. Did you tell them uh, it was like they were bullying him, something like that? Yes. Tell them they took off his snorkel and that stuff? Yes. Did you tell them that they were pushing him and that there were a lot of people? Yes. They asked you more questions about the snorkel and you said, uh, no, I saw that they took it off of him? No. No. 
Did you say the words, I saw that they took it off him? Sí. Yes. And then they asked you to explain, and did you say, from his hand, or they took it from him, or they took it out of his hand, or something like that? De las manos. From his hands. You said the words that are on page 20 of this document? Sí. You told them, they pushed yes. him, he fell, he fell? Sí. Yes. You told them he got up and they started beating him, women as well as men. Were those your words? Yes. They asked, everyone was hitting him from what you could tell, and you said, uh-huh. Sí. Yes. You told them you weren't able to see, so you kept walking up there, and that's when you stopped? Sí. Yes. You initially told the police on August 2nd, on page 22 in this line, that you saw that he... And Nick Mew was running away from there. I don't remember if I said that. I don't understand the question that was asked of me there. And is that probably why you formed it with a question afterwards when you made that statement? He says. Perhaps. You said, I only saw that they were beating him. I did say that. And then eventually the police showed you a picture. Is that right? Sí. Yes. And it was a picture of you standing next to Nick on July 30th, 2022, when he had the knife in his hand. Agreed? Sí. Yes. And that picture refreshed your memory as to where you were and... Objection. Sustained. Did that picture help you remember things that you hadn't remembered before? Un poco, sí. Uh, somewhat, yes. Nevertheless, even when you saw the picture, you said you didn't see him with the knife. I was never able to see him with a knife. You were asked some questions about some slides. Do you remember the uh, slides that they showed where they kind of moved it along? You're asking me if I saw the picture? Today, when this man was asking you questions, they put up on the screen a time when you were walking towards Nick. And I want to ask you about what you remember from that. Does that make sense? Sí, un poco. Yes, a little. When you spoke with the police, you told them he got up and they started beating him, women as well as men. Is that right? Sí. Yes. And then today in your testimony, you said, when closer I saw a girl went to attack him and he defended himself, I think that it was with his hands, but it happened too quickly. That's what you said earlier today. So, yes. When we watched the, the pictures today, where you were walking up, is that what you were describing? The woman in that photo going towards Nick went to attack him and you... And, Sustained. Did you see some photos today? I'll show them to you. Let's do that. Is that you in the red shorts, the red, white, and blue shorts? Yes. I want to show you a section of slides here and then ask you a question about them, okay? Okay. Okay. Starting at 25, 29, I'll move through them. Stopping at 28.59, is that you again in the shorts? Yes, yes. Is that you up in the corner there that we can see the shirt with the glasses? See? Yes. Do you see that there's a girl there in front of the view here, which would be in front of you? See? Yes. Is this the girl that you saw attack Nick Mew? Which actually, I think you could have asked if it was covered in that frame. Overruled. Overruled. You can answer. No recuerdo si fue ella. I don't remember if it was her. 
that's all. Mr. Anderson? Judge, I'd ask to publish some more pages of it, and I would propose I just read it for the sake of brevity. Any objection to admission of the rest of the pages? Uh, Mr. Anderson, the interpreters are not able to hear you. I move to admit the whole transcript. Any objection to the rest of the pages of Exhibit 71? Yes. I don't have an objection to pages that were covered during the cross-examination, and if those pages uh, are admitted, I have no objection to them being published uh, on the elbow now or at a later time. What portions do you want to publish? So I think up to 21 was entered. I'd, 24. Up to, yeah, the rest of it. Up to page 38, they cover the same topics that have been, actually page 40, they cover all the same topics that we've been covering on direct and cross. He was not asked questions about the page 25 through 40. So just a few minutes ago, before Nelson was asking his questions, he wanted to admit this transcript into evidence. But at the time, Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man over here objected to him admitting any of the pages that he hadn't previously spoken about. So now that it's his turn to ask questions again, he wants to admit the whole thing because he just prevented Nelson from asking any questions about any of the other pages other than the ones he had previously spoken about. It's another dirty trick because he knows Nelson's opportunity for asking questions is over. I can do that now. I, I, honestly, I was not keeping track of what pages you're looking at, so I'm not in a good position to say yes or no <coughs> specific pages. And I don't have a copy of the transcript, so I'm at a disadvantage. Can we approach? Yes. All right, the objection's overruled. I'll receive the portions referenced by Mr. Anderson. I think that in total, it's going to be pages 18 through 40? Yes. All right. You may proceed. So when you spoke with the officer, you said Nick walked up to you, walked over, and then you saw people bleeding, right? Yes. You didn't talk about seeing anything else. You didn't talk about seeing Nick do anything. No. And when you, law enforcement confronted you with a photo of being right there, you still denied seeing anything from when you were up close. Okay. Okay. Yes or no? Yeah, Anderson, you're just not very intimidating. With your cute little Ben Shapiro voice. Repeat the question. You told the officer you didn't get close enough to see what Nick was doing, right? Objection asked and answered. Overruled. Right? En un punto, sí. At some point, yes. And then the officer showed you the photo of you touching Nick, right? Yes. And you still denied seeing him do anything. I'm still not understanding your question. Judge, I have no objection to publishing page 24, which has already been published, which is the exact response that he gives. You never tell police that you saw Nick defend himself, right? I don't remember that day, no. Did you ever use the word defend at all in your entire interview? I don't remember. It's been a long time. Today, you remember seeing him def saying you saw him defend himself. Yes, yes, a little. That's the first time you've ever said that. I said when you asked me that I saw that he was defending himself, but that it happened so quickly there were many people around. Is your better memory better now than it was two years ago when you were interviewed? I remember a little. I, I said uh, because of the picture that was shown to me. You never spoke to, not with, amongst yourself as friends, cousins, wife, uh, Mr. Anderson, the interpreters are not able to hear you. Sure. You're asked if you ever spoke amongst yourselves or with Nick about what happened. And no. He said it's no. Just that we don't know because we didn't see anything. We can't say, oh, something happened, right? We didn't see anything. If I said that, it's because we had not seen if what had happened very well. 
you saw Nick getting attacked by all these people. Nobody came after you, did they? No. And you, no. You and Nick didn't run away, right? Objection beyond the scope. Repetitive, cumulative. I'll move on to that. Thank you. Apparently, Stay Puffed was finished asking questions, but no one heard him say that because his voice is so feminine. Oh, I said I was done. Sorry. Oh. I didn't. <laughs> thought I everyone thought heard. We were uh, moving on to another topic. I'm sorry. No. Um, thank you, Mr. Chaguez. Your testimony is finished. You may step down. Mr. Anderson, um, do you have more witnesses? Approach quick. Yes. Mr. Anderson. State calls Amber Lynn. Amber Lynn. You mean the porn star from the 80s? Amber Lind, L-I-N-D. Oh, Amber Lind, the DNA expert. Well, I suppose it could have just as easily have been the real Amber Lynn from the 80s, because I'm sure she's quite the expert on some types of DNA. But don't get too excited, because I'm not covering this. And before someone gets upset out there, because I'm skipping a DNA scientist, please just let me explain. The DNA found on the knife is not in dispute in any way. You can see Mew in the video using the knife. We know it's his knife. I don't need an expensive DNA test to tell me that. It's just the bovine attorneys wasting taxpayer money again. And I believe I had said in the last video that the guy in the red, white, and blue shorts, or Ariel, was the final witness for day five. I was incorrect about that, but we just don't need this woman's testimony. And if I were the defense attorney here, there's only one question I would have asked her. And that is, uh, Dr. Lind, can a DNA analysis tell us whether or not someone acted in self-defense? No? Okay, no more questions, Your Honor, because that's what this trial is supposed to be about. So that is the end of day five, and I'll be back as soon as I possibly can with the beginning of day six. See you soon. So I'll leave you with that. Please enjoy your weekend uh, and come back rested Monday morning, 8 a.m. Please take the jury out. Thank you. Gotcha, you sack of shit.